If I could ask them. Yeah. Have an opening yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, if you like. Or no, no. I love doing opening statements. No, if you, if you really want to. What's with all the opening statements today? Go for it. It's in recognition of the fine staff we have working for us at the AGSP. Uh, with your indulgence, you. Chair, if that's. Uh, yes, you. Thank you very much. And my indulgence. So, Senators, the first five months of 2017 have been challenging for the ATSP. Since the 1st of January this year, we've released 57 investigation reports into accidents and incidents across the aviation, marine and rail transport modes. We've commenced an additional 42 new safety investigations since the 1st of January, some of which have been serious accidents and high-profile incidents. In Perth, Western Australia, during the city's Australia Day celebrations, a Grumman American Aviation Corp G73 Mallard aircraft crashed into the Swan River. Tra tragically, the pilot and passenger died in the accident, which was witnessed by tens of thousands of spectators. On the 21st of February this year, we launched an investigation into the accident involving a Super King aircraft at Essendon Airport in Victoria. The aircraft commenced to take off roll just before 9am and shortly after becoming airborne struck the roof of the adjacent DFO complex. There was a significant post-impact fire and the pilot and four passengers were fatally injured. On the 17th of March, the right propeller of a Rex Saab 340B aircraft detached in flight with 16 passengers and three crew on board. Fortunately, the aircraft landed safely in Sydney. With invaluable assistance from the New South Wales Police Air Wing, the ATSB recovered the 100 kilogram propeller assembly from bushland near Reevesby. The ATSB's examination identified a fracture in the propeller shaft, which led to the separation of the propeller. <coughs> We've published a preliminary report and the investigations already resulted in safety action from GE, the engine manufacturer, and Regional Express. Our investigations into these accidents and serious incidents are ongoing. While I'm unable to provide additional comment at this time, I'm assured the committee that our investigators are working hard to determine the causal factors. Importantly, we've published the second interim report into the in-flight pitch disconnect involving an ATR-72 aircraft near Sydney Airport on 20th of February 2014. Our investigations identified transient elevator deflections during a pitch disconnect could lead to aerodynamic loads which could exceed the strength of the aircraft structure. As a result of our investigation to date, we've issued safety recommendations to the European and Australian regulators, the ASA and CASA, as well as the manufacturer of the aircraft ATR. These parties now have 90 days to respond to our recommendations. We've also released our research report of safety analysis of remotely piloted aircraft systems, 2012 to 2016, which provides an in-depth analysis of the risks associated with RPAS in Australia. It's now four months since the search for missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 was suspended. The ATSB search team and the experts from many organisations, both in Australia and overseas, supporting the search, worked tirelessly and with absolute commitment, dedication and a single-minded focus to find the aircraft. They did this not just to provide the answers for the families of those on board, but to improve transport safety. It was difficult and challenging work and I'd like to place on record my appreciation to all of those individuals from around the world who have been involved in the search for MH370. Our disappointment that we were unable to find the aircraft is profound. Captain Chris Manning, the ATSB Aviation Commissioner and former Chief Pilot of Qantas, ironically enough appointed as a, a result of the Senate inquiry here and the Forsyth report, is present this evening to provide an update on the reopened investigation of the 2009 Norfolk accident, which is nearing completion. Many challenges face transport safety into the future. There's significant growth in aviation, rail and marine transport, and we're seeing some of the effects of emerging technologies, such as automation and the use of remotely piloted aircraft or drones. I'd like to thank the committee for inviting the ATSB to observe the Senate Committee's drone inquiry on site in Dolby. The ATSB will continue to work with aviation, rail and marine operators, industry associations and regulators to highlight safety concerns identified from our occurrence data and investigation findings. As I approach the end of my first year as Chief Commissioner of the ATSB, I'm humbled by our achievements of my team in safety investigations and communication, trend analysis and prediction, and improved efficiency. While I acknowledge there's still work to be done, I'm proud to lead a team which is committed to doing all we can to maintain and enhance transport safety in Australia. Thanks, Senator. Thanks, Mr Hood. I'm just... When did you release the... Sorry, Senator Xenophon, but the... Uh 
your report, your safety analysis of a remotely piloted aircraft systems 2012 to 2016. Uh, Senator, our remotely piloted, we've, we've issued two reports into the remotely piloted aerial systems. One's a public report mm -hmm. and one was a submission to the Senate inquiry. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we issued the uh, initial submission in uh, early 2017. Is that correct, Dr Godley? It was by the due date, I think it was in November. So late 2016, Senator, and our public report, which was issued the 16th of March 2017, um, yes. and they're the two pieces of work that we've done in relation to RPAS. Great. Thanks very much. Senator Zenfall. Thank you. Um, I think you said there was some irony in uh, Captain Manning being uh, here. I don't, I don't understand what the irony was. Well, I'm, I'm delighted that Captain Manning is here. I think you could not possibly have a more highly qualified aviator and a very... Uh, Welcome addition to the agency. I'm just picking up on. I don't. I, don't, I didn't. Oh, get the I irony. suppose the irony was uh, was the last the time. I, the last time I sat here, I think uh, we didn't have one. So that's um, right. Um, can I just go to? Uh, and I think some of my colleagues may have questions in terms of the issue of drones. Um, and I don't want to cut across. It, just but, go for it. Sir, yeah, it? Okay. Yeah. I just want to focus on the Pellier uh, incident, uh, and uh, and you're familiar with the the Senate inquiry that that looked into that, I think it's quite a comprehensive report. I know that uh, my colleague, Senator Fawcett, with his experience, had very valuable input in that report. Uh, Mr Manning, what, well, what, what role, where are we at with that? Uh, what can you say publicly about that? And how can we be uh, reassured that the process will be robust and independent because there are a number of concerns expressed by the Senate inquiry in terms of that, the way that uh, report was con conducted. And I think there was a perception that whilst um, that there was, I think it's fair to say, there was a perception uh, or a view taken by the committee, including me, that the pilot in question was treated as something of a scapegoat in terms of the investigative process. So thank you, Senator. Um, a few issues in relation to that for those members, and I think, uh, I'm not sure about Senator Rice, I'm aware that uh, certainly Senator Stirl, Senator Fawcett and Senator Xenophon were members of the committee uh, when the uh, the Senate inquiry was conducted, the ASRR. And Senator Heffner, yeah. but sadly, he's no longer. That's right, no, before my time. So, <laughs> so uh, for Senator Rice's benefit, obviously, uh, an accident occurred in 2009 with a pilot, a patient, uh, a doctor, a nurse, and two pilots on board a West Bin aircraft from Samoa to Norfolk Island. Uh, they ended up ditching off Norfolk Island. Uh, an investigation was conducted uh, that was published by the ATSB. Uh, there were some concerns expressed at uh, the quality of that investigation and, and the depth in which it examined the issues. Uh, so therefore, a Senate inquiry was uh, constituted into Aviation Safety and Regulatory Review. Out of that uh, came a review, a peer review of the ATSB by the Transport Safety Board of Canada, who uh, observed that uh, whilst the ATSB has uh, some world-leading practices, it didn't necessarily follow all of those in the conduct of that investigation and the investigation was reopened and we're close now to finalising that investigation. At the time in 2009 I was employed by the Civil Aviation Safety Authority as Executive Manager Operations, therefore in taking the position as Chief Commissioner of the ATSB I declared a material conflict of interest and I didn't think it appropriate for me to be an approving authority for um, the reopened investigation. So I declared that to both the Minister and to the ATSB Commission and as a result I've not been privy at all to the development of the reopened investigation but instead uh, Captain Manning has assumed the role of the approving authority within the ATSB. So in matters uh, pertaining to this Senator um, Xenophon, uh, Captain Manning is, uh, is able to answer those questions and I'll pass it across to him. 